We made an oatmeal stout originally because it's a recipe that I formulated and brewed early in my career. I, I have to admit it probably started as a homebrew recipe that I made in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I've always been a big fan of oatmeal stouts. I can't really tell you who specifically as far as the brewer is the inspiration for that beer. I think most of it was what I thought in my mind an oatmeal stout should taste like. And a lot of my first recipes were pulled from Roger Prost's book on real ale where he surveyed brewers in England 20 years ago and they coughed up their recipes to him. Back to the original reason why, because I love to drink them. I, there's no other beer. I, I'll go to the oatmeal stout every time it's on draft here. Every time. So, um, recipe and formulation standpoint wise, it's a pretty straightforward mash bill when it comes to stouts. It's a lot of roasted barley. Uh, we've chosen Breeze as our supplier for our roasted barley and we really like the flavors that come from that uh, malt. It does have a nice charge of caramel malt, but we try to keep that in balance. I don't want this to be a cloyingly sweet beer by any sense, and the hops are a little bit subdued. So we're really looking for a lot of coffee, roasted malt character, and a background of caramel malt behind it. Um, we use some Maris Otter in this beer, along with some Munich malt, to bring up the toasty levels a little bit. And of course, this is all just about um, flavor layering more than anything because the roasted malts are really going to be predominant no matter what and everything. So it's certainly an American twist on an oatmeal stout um, trying to capture roast barley characteristics and really centering in on that, getting oatmeals and oatmeal in the mix from a texture standpoint, trying to create a creamy beer and sometimes using oats can be tough in that regard. They can almost bring astringency to a beer if you're not careful, but I think that that is one of the other center points. We focused on U.S. grown fuggles. There's something about Willamette Valley grown U.S. fuggles that I just am in love with. I mean, obviously we find some interesting opposites that you would expect in brewing. A lot of times people come to the tasting room and they're turned off by double barrel ale because they think it's too bitter because they've been drinking American light lager. So then you think, well, gosh, how are they ever going to accept a stout? You got a beer that, that looks big, dark, scary, and aggressive. But as soon as you smell it, you get more of those familiar flavors of coffee, of chocolate cake. Um, which is really inviting and then you taste it and it's not it's it's not what you expect in beer it's got a creamy texture and yet there's something that coats your tongue and begs for more at the same time and I think that um, anybody who has any attraction to coffee any attraction to chocolate would love this beer it's amazing that way and yet it has immense drinkability so Here's how it goes here at Firestone Walker. We come up with a new recipe. The owners have always been very cautious to proceed with new beers, and I think that's been a great thing for our program because we need to prove the beer is going to taste good consistently and be drinkable and have all the things that need to go into being a Firestone beer. So typically we have a little bit of practice. So when practicing a beer, we always come up with you know, we gotta have a name for it. Something's gotta be written on the brew sheet. We gotta call it something. It needs to kind of gain a personality before we can really get to know it well. So Velvet Merkin was the name of this beer uh, right out of the gates here at Firestone. And uh, of course, nobody knew what in the heck a Merkin was, so no one thought twice about it. And um, after four or five years of brewing the beer, that is the name of the beer. And that's what everybody has come to call it. It's one, uh, awards both at Great American Beer Festival and World Beer Cup under that name and nothing uh, uh, makes me chuckle inside more than when Chris Schwerzy has to say and the medal goes to Velvet Merkin on stage in front of like, you know, 5,000 people. So, but we've had our fun with that and uh, the beer's going to go into bottle and um, 
So now that it's an official beer of Firestone, we have an official name and we've transitioned it to Velvet Merlin. Um, I don't know where that comes from, but certainly uh, it's a nice name all of itself. We can, we can weave an interesting story with that name as well. And uh, will Merkins ever uh, return to our brewery again? Uh, I think probably they will. So it's okay. I I'm okay with the name change. Velvet Merlin's release date is uh, October 1 and basically what we're doing now with our new seasonal program is Solus is going to be here in the fat of summer and we're getting done brewing that now and that should work its way through the market uh, by October 1 and Velvet Merlin will be right behind it and it'll be a perfect fall beer moving into uh, the winter season here and uh, that's when you'll see it. I can only drink five beers. I mean, can you can only drink five more beers the rest of your life. Where would this one rank? If I can only drink five more beers the rest of my life, be the first kill me in about 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>